So I've been doing this YouTube thing for over five years now, and in that time YouTube has grown and evolved in ways that I don't think any of us could have anticipated. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? It obviously depends on who you ask. But I do know that myself and other content creators have been expressing concerns about the direction that YouTube seems to be taking. And that's why a recent video from Markiplier caught my eye. Because the title suggested that it seemed to address some of the concerns that I've been having. It is simply called YouTube Has Changed, and in it Mark uses his smooth, sultry voice to say that. I've seen this change in attitude. It's a change from seeing YouTube as a platform where anyone can do anything, to a system where you have to follow strict rules. You have to criticize others. It's every man for himself and no one can cooperate. And it's becoming less of a community about making cool videos for you guys, which is what it always has been about. And not long thereafter, Felix, aka PewDiePie, aka the biggest channel on this platform, had this to say on the subject. YouTube is becoming this drama machine where everyone is throwing in their two cents to get 20 cents back. And it's created this mob mentality, talking about the topic is gonna get them more views and attention, while their fans are just nodding away for that sweet confirmation bias. And since then, a large number of creators have weighed in on this topic, including Phil DeFranco and Matthew Santoro and KSI. But when it comes to this topic, I think it's actually YouTube OG himself, Hank Green, who in my opinion summed up the issue best when he said in a recent video that the pure meritocracy that's maybe part of the mythology of YouTube is long gone, and one has to wonder whether that is one, creating frustration, and two, decreasing the number of people who are taking chances to do weird, amazing, wonderful things on this platform. I was even lucky enough to have a little Twitter chat with him about this because he saw my comment and reached out and just genuinely cared because he's an awesome human like that. But all of this has just gotten me thinking. Because while so many of us can agree that there is something wrong with the platform that we know and love, it has become less about creativity and become more commercial, but there is a reason for that. And I don't think anybody has really touched on that reason, which is why I felt the need to sort of weigh in on the conversation. And there don't seem to be that many people out there acknowledging that YouTube is largely to blame for this. And before I begin explaining myself, let me just say that this is informed solely on my own experience and the experience of all those people that I interact with. But that being said, I have shared this theory with a lot of creators and they can pretty much all agree that it at least has some merit to it. You can obviously decide for yourself if you agree or not. But I would first argue that, you know, drama, pessimism, whatever you want to call it, all of that falls under a larger umbrella of content that is dominating YouTube at the moment. I've always called them gimmicks, but these days you guys seem to be calling it by a different name, clickbait. And before you go thinking that I'm starting to call people out, let me just say that gimmicks or clickbait is something that everyone does. And there is a very simple reason for that. It f***ing works. Just look at the videos I posted in the last month or so. You have a video on tea, another one on bathroom bills, another one on bisexuality, and a story time video about butt sex. Which of these videos do you think generated twice the traffic in half the time? Yep, there it is. But see, gimmicks have been around long before YouTube was ever a thing. And so YouTubers basically face the same challenge that every creative professional has over the years, which is balancing the artistic integrity of your creative voice with the gimmicks and stuff that sells. And since every artist is different and every voice is different, every Every balance is different and that is good because that creates variety and gives people more options as to what kind of content they want to consume. After all, I don't think that many people who read the New York Times are also reading Cosmopolitan or that many people who watch MTV are also watching CNBC. That is not to say that any one of those things is better than the other. The point is when you have a lot of options, people are much more free to choose content that suits them and their tastes. And I'd argue that's what makes YouTube a great platform because there is such a wide variety of stuff for people to consume. But when it comes to the content creator, trying to strike that balance, I would argue that it's YouTube that's actually tipping the scales in a direction and sending us down a dangerous path. So there are two main forces that have shaped YouTube into the behemoth that it is today. The first being a huge influx of users. YouTube has gone from a small site with a bunch of cat videos to the second most visited website on the entire internet. And the second is money. And with more viewers and money coming in, YouTube wanted to maximize two things. First, it wanted to maximize the amount of time that users spent when they visited the site. Two, it wanted to maximize the amount of ad revenue coming in, since YouTube is a business and businesses need to make money. And so to maximize those two goals, they made two very key changes in the overall functionality of their site. The first of which being what people call the broken sub box. Of course, we figured 
figured out since then that sub boxes haven't broken, that's just how they work now. And I could explain it, but Game Theory did a far better job than I ever could. PewDiePie produces tons of videos, at least one a day, which gets him an enormous amount of views and subscribers, but it's also really hard for subscribers to keep up. For even the most dedicated of bros, a hundred minutes a week of Maya, Marzia, and fisting is a lot to watch, so they end up skipping videos, missing them, while Felix keeps working his little pink headphones off to keep them flowing out. At a certain point, between the new uploads that Pewds is pushing out and the ones that the true bro has missed or skipped, they hit a certain percentage of watched to unwatched videos, and YouTube determines that the subscriber is no longer interested in the channel's content, which results in PewDiePie's videos no longer appearing in their notifications. Seriously, go watch the rest of that video. It is eye-opening. So if you're a creator trying to build an audience on YouTube, accumulating a decent subscriber count doesn't really do you much good anymore. Because you have to make sure that you're keeping everybody's interest across all of your videos or you risk losing them. The second is a newfound emphasis on recommendations. So to those of you who have been on YouTube for a while, think about the ways in which you used to discover new channels. Many of that was through the community tools. When you subscribe to a channel, you didn't just see their videos. You also saw who they were watching, who they were commenting on, who they were subscribing to, who they were liking. Success on YouTube used to depend a lot more on you being embraced by a community of not just viewers, but other content creators. And it was vastly easier for multiple communities to coexist peacefully because the sandbox was big enough for all of us to play it. But now, all of those features have gone away and have been replaced by YouTube's recommendations. And those recommendations tend to favor videos that are already generating a lot of traffic. Because when YouTube creates mega channels with millions upon millions of views and subscribers, that looks good to big ticket ad buyers and gets them to spend more money on ad campaigns. So those of you out there asking Asking where the community of creative people went, there is your answer. Now it's more about optimizing SEO, having a snappy title, an eye-catching thumbnail, and doing whatever you can to stand out on your own. And again, you have to make sure that you maintain people's attention at all times or you risk losing them. So given this new direction that YouTube is traveling, it is no wonder that there are more and more creators out there relying on a certain type of content. Drama gets views, controversy gets traffic, clicks and views are king, and if you can take down your competition in the process, even better. It's gotten to the point where there are even channels and creators out there who have started purchasing views and subscribers from thousands and thousands of fake accounts just so that they can overinflate their value and try to game the system. And so for smaller creators like myself, when it comes to balancing artistic integrity and shticks, not to mention the question of staying honest, it is no longer a question of less money versus more money. It's a question of money or none at all. And I think that's also what's holding back the Markiplier's and the PewDiePie's from fully identifying the problem, since these guys are already giants on YouTube. And so this overall shift towards clickbaity content is more of just an annoyance for them because they already have those giant platforms to build on. But when it comes to smaller creators, it pretty much threatens our livelihood, not to mention the integrity of channels that we have sometimes spent years building and trying to maintain. And it's frustrating to say the least because it seems like there are those of us out there who are being punished for taking the high road. Meanwhile, YouTube's actually rewarding people who engage in bad behavior. And that is not to say that gimmicks and bad behavior are the only way to get ahead. In fact, I would say that many of YouTube's top creators got there by making honest, quality, really awesome content. I'm just saying that it's getting harder and harder for honest creators who also produce awesome content to achieve that same level of success or achieve success at all. Which is why I would argue that that sort of thing is becoming more and more rare as other creators have already pointed out. But I am very, very thankful that big creators are starting to speak up about this because it shows that I'm not just some guy who's sitting here being salty because people succeed that I don't like. And I hope that more creators and more users start speaking up about this because it shows how YouTube's shifts have started to alienate people at every level. But still, many naysayers will probably say something along the lines of, What is the point? of these videos. Let's make YouTube great again. Oh, shut up. Well, let me tell you the point. If YouTube continues to head in this direction, you're going to start seeing a few things happen. First off, you're going to start seeing career creators start to either shift away from YouTube or leave the platform entirely. Be it because it just leaves a bad taste in their mouth or because they simply cannot make ends meet by doing YouTube alone. Maintaining a channel is a lot of work that is extremely time consuming. And so if it proves too difficult, then we're just going to move our thing and take it elsewhere. And that's not just bad for 
for us because a lot of small and mid-level creators have much, much more engaged audiences because it's a much more intimate experience where they feel like they're part of a group and less like a single number in a gigantic crowd of millions. And as creators start to either shift away or sell out, you're going to see a reduction in the overall variety of content. Since creative risks on YouTube have become more dangerous than ever. One too many bad videos and your channel traffic hits a downward spiral. And as we established before, a greater variety is a good thing because it means more people can log into your site and connect with something that they like. Third, you are going to see a substantial decrease in engagement. And not just because some creators may decide to leave and not just because there are a small few who are poisoning the well and using their so-called negative content to put people off. Say you're messing around with the YouTube homepage and you stumble across a random video, like, I don't know, 12 cats that look like celebrities. And you watch it and it's good and at the end of that video they tell you to click a link and download an app. How likely are you to actually do that? This is just a random video on a random channel that you stumbled on out of the blue and now they're trying to sell you something? Now picture a channel that you've been watching for a long time now. Weeks, months, or even years. This is a creator who you've watched evolve over the course of multiple videos. And you may have even built a little bit of a relationship with them because you've interacted with them in the comments or on Twitter. Now say you watch one one of their videos and in that video that same creator tells you to download the exact same app. Whose word are you going to trust more? I don't know about you but I'm going with this guy. But if things continue going the way they are he may not be around to make as many videos or even be around at all. We all got rent to pay and fridges to stock. Now I'm sure that this was not YouTube's intention to threaten people's livelihoods or to play favorites. I'm sure that they were just trying to act in their own best interest. I'm sure that all these other byproducts were purely unintentional. But intentional Intentionally or not, they are creating an environment that is alienating people at every level. And I think there's something to be said when the largest user on your platform has talked about how much he doesn't like the new direction that you're taking. But I would also argue that it is possible to turn back this destructive trend. So long as YouTube is able to recognize the value of different kinds of creators with different kinds of content. And maybe bring back some of the communal tools that made people want to stick around this site to begin with. It does you no good to become popular and then forget what it is that made you popular to begin with. And after all, it is the community that puts the social into social media platforms. Communities are the lifeblood that determine which social platforms succeed and which ones do not. But that is just me and my experience and my opinions. I would obviously love to know what you guys think as viewers, and I would obviously love input from any one of the creators that I mentioned in this video. If by some miracle they actually stumble upon this video. Point is, do you think YouTube has changed? Has it changed for the better? Has it gotten worse? Are we just being crybabies? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. Make sure you click that like button if you agree. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications so that you don't miss a video. I'm gonna be taking a break next week because I don't know if you guys heard, but uh, I'm getting married. So yeah, next time you guys see me, I'm gonna be a married man. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that. Till then, my name is RJ Not Adam. Thank you so much for watching.